everybody, welcome to uh, Halloween Talk, the last title here for a blog, Halloween Talk, because tomorrow night, uh, the winter forecast will be the main headline that uh, will not have a video, it will be a written forecast with graphics, for those of you that are not big video fans, uh, that'll be how it's going to be set up for uh, tomorrow night, and then starting Monday, Snow Talk will then become the new title of the blog. Can you believe it's already been... Uh, that long of a period since uh, March that we've uh, avoided having to use that and now we're having to use it. So anyway, so look forward to that. Uh, again, Halloween night, 9 o'clock, give or take a few minutes. Depends on how much candy I've got to give out. Uh, you may uh, see uh, the winter forecast get posted there, so make sure to check it out. So let's talk about Halloween because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the setup. First off today, man, that inversion that got trapped, uh, it was showing up after midnight last night and this morning. Uh, you know, temperatures as you go up usually cool. Well, in this case, they cooled so much and then they actually warmed again. And we call that an inversion, and that traps uh, the uh, moisture in its uh, layer that uh, the inversion takes place. And you get a lot of stratus that form, and nimble stratus especially. And they were stuck. And uh, the only way you can get rid of that is to get the sun up to create an imbalance of heating and cooling and we call that mixing in the atmosphere and that allows us to mix the air up enough to break the clouds up and break up the inversion and get everything back on track the way it's supposed to be but that did not happen until late this afternoon so for those of you to the south you enjoyed some sunshine but for Louisville North not exactly the best days and unfortunately we don't have long to enjoy any type of clearing the gap of clearing is very thin or very narrow i will say this though speaking of thin the cloud cover the leading edge of this is very thin cirrus clouds and we'll see that probably tomorrow morning so i think we're going to start off tomorrow with hazy sunshine in some areas a beautiful sunrise potentially the cloud deck though will thicken and lower as the day goes on but because the clouds will be thinner initially that will likely allow us to warm up into the 60s tomorrow before the cloud deck thickens enough, the temperatures which should level off if not fall a couple degrees in the afternoon. But then we've got to deal with the rain. And there's really three pieces to this. And I mentioned this on social media earlier. This first wave is going to pass by late tonight and early tomorrow, mainly Grays, Indiana, and Illinois. Our main concern is going to be this southern flank that's caused so many problems for Texas with flooding and severe weather. Now, it will likely bring us a good soaking rain for Tennessee and then scattering of showers moving in across Kentucky, especially for Halloween night. Some of those could get a little heavy at times. Maybe I would rot some lightning and thunder in some cases. Again, that'll be later on on Halloween night and especially overnight. And then we've got to deal with the main core, the comma head of the system, which is back here into uh, New Mexico and El Paso itself. That, there's a little bit of a variance in the models on how that's going to track. Some take it far enough to our south that all it does is graze us with clouds Sunday and Monday. And some actually spit out some showers right, right across the area. So that's why you'll see rain chances for Sunday and Monday, it's mainly for the uh, comma head portion of the low, the third piece that rolls out. So it's a one, two, three deal before we can finally say goodbye to this uh, particular system. So let's get right to it on Futurecast. Uh, as we head into tomorrow morning, you see how it's hinting at some of that thinning of the clouds. So there'll be a quick warming in the uh, morning period on Saturday. But it won't take long to thicken the cloud deck up. Any raindrops will likely fall north and west of Louisville throughout the daylight hours. No problems if uh, you're heading to Lexington for Keeneland, by the way. Then we get into trick or treat time, and starting about sunset to 9 o'clock, that is when the showers from that southern wave push in. They should be pretty spotty in nature, but I will say that they'll begin to pick up as we head into the overnight period and at times produce some moderate downpours, especially over Kentucky, as we head into the overnight hours and then very early on Sunday. By the way, don't forget, set your clocks back one hour before you go to bed Halloween night. Sunday itself, it will be in between the first and second waves that have already passed. All we're waiting for now is the comma head in New Mexico to move through. So this is our day of quiet, really, on Sunday. And if we can get this system that's uh, the comma head to pass far enough to our south, the clouds may actually be able to push a little further to the south, which would allow some sunshine for at least southern Indiana, maybe northern Kentucky. If we get that sun on Sunday, we'll easily hit 70. And that's what the model is indicating that. So we can't roll it out. Uh, but right now we're still getting some data that suggests that the system, the comma head, may track a little further to the north, which may keep us mainly cloudy, so we're going to stick with 60s for now. We'll evaluate that as we get closer. All right, so there you have it. That's an extra uh, model run that I had in there. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let me just skip past that. All right, now we're getting into the data for next week when it comes to the warming trend. And what I want you to point out, if again, if you are unfamiliar with this, you are, you are the operational models. The Canadian's not available this far out. 
uh, of the uh, GFS and the Euro, and then you've got the Ensemble models, which Canadian does have an Ensemble model, which is just a smoothing out of all the craziness that the models, all the data that they ingest, smooths it out to an even keel, and that's kind of what we look for, uh, and compare it to the actual model runs that update so often to see if there is any type of agreement with the ensembles to help us out with the forecast. And when we look to the ridge next week, we've got a decent sign here of a good high pressure that's going to pump in some warm air. Uh, the Euro is really strong with this wave that will pass well to our north uh, next Thursday. It may increase our clouds and maybe a shower for southern Indiana, but if this low is as deep as what is progged, that could really give us some uh, good warming here across portions of the Ohio Valley into the Gulf states uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So right now we're going to peg Wednesday as our warmest day out of this period uh, with that high pressure pumping in that south warm air. And then we get into next weekend, and this is where we run into problems yet again. This is going to be Friday. Look at the difference here. Here's the GFS deterministic model. It's got a low pressure and a front moving through here on Friday. Uh, the Euro has it over here in Denver. When you look at the ensembles, the ensembles are showing fairly quiet weather actually uh, over the Ohio Valley. Um, not really a strong signal either way, but there's a huge difference here between the GFS and the Euro for sure when it comes to timing of that system next weekend. Because when you look at next Monday, not this coming Monday, but Monday, the if I can read that, is that Monday the the second? I think it's the second. Boy, I cannot read. No, that would be the second. This would be Monday the, uh, I don't know, Monday the 8th. Is that right? I got glasses on. I can't even read my own maps. Anyway, Monday the 8th. Look at the difference here. The uh, GFS is already moving that low out of here for the weekend, while the Euro is really deepening the low, and the Ozarks moving toward us with a good soaking rain and thunderstorms. When you look at the ensembles, not a lot of help here with uh, the ensembles. They do show a dip here, which would indicate certainly a some type of a front that would be moving through, but they're not in good agreement yet. So... At this point, uh, with such a speed difference here, we are going to go more with the, uh, the Euro idea of a, a deeper low. Sometimes the European can be too slow with pushing low pressures out of the south like that. So we've got to keep that in mind too. But the GFS has a tendency to be too fast with northern streams. So they have their own personalities. And so we're trying to balance it out. So we'll likely gradually increase the rain chance for next Friday and especially Saturday and Sunday to account for this system passing through. Then we just get some crazies. I mean, get off the bus kind of stuff here. This is crazy stuff. When the GFS came out today, I was like, what? You've got to be kidding me. I mean, this is like Polar Express cold air dives in around the 12th of November. And if you all saw that, I'm surprised I didn't see as many tweets about this today because I thought I was going to get flooded with it, but I didn't. Um, which is good. I think you guys are learning to not jump on these. Because when you look at the ensembles, you don't see anything that drastic. That's good. Now, is the GFS just losing its mind here that, oh, man, you know, this, there's no way that's going to happen? Not entirely. I think it's got the idea of a deep trough that is going to drop down in the lower 48. I just don't see it happening that quick on the 12th. And the GFS is notorious with these type of deep troughs showing them way too early, sometimes a week too early. And we get support from that by looking at the indices. Because when we look at the euro and the GFS, first off, you're going to go positive. Let me change my pin color, sorry, so you can see that. When you go positive on the uh, Arctic um, oscillation, that's not a good sign that Arctic air is displaced. And GFS is actually showing that. When it comes to a blocking pattern, the Euro is basically either neutral or in the positive zone, and the GFS is trending positive. And the PNA, when it's negative, that tells you that it's usually a ridge in the east, and so does the GFS. Say so the same thing. So the indices basically are telling us that what the GFS came up with today for the 12th, it's just not making sense right now. Um, and it has a lot of argument against it. So that's why we're not jumping on that idea. But I did say that it is hinting at what could come our way. And the CFS model is hinting at that. And it would be near Thanksgiving. Uh, it may give give or take four or four days on either side of Thanksgiving here. You gotta give me, cut me some slack. But close to that period, there are signs a trough would develop underneath the ridge across portions of Canada. And I can't show you the European weeklies that came out last night, but they are strongly agreeing on that same idea of around Thanksgiving. So we'll see if indeed that uh, this turns out to be right. Again, the GFS, it can, it's really good at sniffing out what could happen down the road. It, gets, it just gets too excited, too dramatic, too quick, and the Euro is a little more even kill 
it kind of balances things out a little bit, and that's why we uh, the Euro has a better score rate than GFS does. So that is how things are looking, guys. Uh, that's it. That's it for my uh, non-snow talk blog talks <laughs> for the season. I hope you enjoyed uh, the late spring, summer, and fall. Now it's time to get down to some real fun. I'll see you guys tomorrow night.